All right, so how are you guys? Good? What amazing venue is this? I mean, give a round of applause to the people putting this event together. It's incredible. Uh, as speakers, we get, do get to see a lot of venues and amazing stuff, but we're kind of blown away also from what's coming through the day. I mean, you'll be amazed to see some of the surprises they geared up for you. Okay, all right, we're gonna start very quickly. Um, this is what we're going to be talking about. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, mega trends, a little bit of an intro, and then I'm going to show you the event of the future. What does it look like, and how can we be future-proof? Watch out for idea alerts, discussions, and idea bursts. Um, if you want some technical, more sort of tools-oriented session, we're going to have some breakout this afternoon as well. So make sure to join that one if you want more practical advice. This is more about the bigger picture, what we're gonna be doing in the future. Let me say that events are a big deal. And that's my big message for today, so thanks very much. No, right. They are, they are a big deal. And that's, that's what is changing right now. A lot of people are perceiving the impact, finally, that events have on the economy, on lives. And, uh, but before I start sort of telling you why they're a big deal. I mean, I saw a little bit of Italians in the room. I could spot some talking, ciao, come state, tutto bene. I'm Italian, yeah, there you go. Right, so yeah, as you can tell by my beautiful accent, um, I live in the US right now. Um, these are, you know, I would say some of the things that we've done. I mean, it's important that I stress the fact that whatever you're gonna listen to today is based on research, it's not based on me sort of looking at my crystal ball and saying, okay, the future is gonna look like this. This is what I see. Uh, no, it's more like our experience, and I've been doing this for 10 years, uh, trends specifically for the past six years. Um, so yeah, I know here in Dubai you care about proof. And this is my proof. These are some of the brands we work with. But enough about me. Actually, just one more thing about me. I grew up in the 80s. That was my iPhone, I guess. That was my, pretty much most of my life. And that were, that were actually my mom's Kardashians, right? How many people remember those? Yeah, right? Pretty cool. Um, you remember the 80s, the 90s? It was fun, right? Right, you used the phone. How weird was that? Like now, if someone tries to call you, you're like, why, why, why are you calling me? Leave me alone, send me an email. Send me a message, calling, that's awkward. Um, you know, your marketing, you have a beautiful brochure. You still have brochure sometimes, yeah. LinkedIn, a Rolodex, that was cool. You know, things started to change a little bit. We got MySpace, got Britney. I had to put it in, a little bit of it. You know, got the iPod. Who had one of these? Yeah? Did you enjoy killing them? I killed the shit out of them. Um, Steve came ahead. I actually moved to London. Uh, is it me? I moved to London when Lemon Brothers collapsed in 2008. You wanna give me another one? Is it, work? Is it me? Am I making noises? All right, that's better. You know, uh, then Uber came along, and all of a sudden everything is more difficult. All of a sudden things start to change. And you know, we need more attendees, we need more technology, we need more sessions, we need more food options. And I guess one message loud and clear for the panel this morning, that we have one thing that we have less of is definitely budgets, right? And, and so, yeah, thanks for that. So what are we gonna do about it? Let's see. Let's take this journey. So I don't have beautiful news for you, unfortunately. I wish I could share better news, but how many, how many fans in the room? All right, I feel, do you feel a little bit of withdrawal? We're talking about Game of Thrones, by the way. A little bit of withdrawal uh, from, yeah, that play out. But winter is coming. What I mean by that is that um, somebody turned eight in March, and that's um, the market. So we're in the second longest bull market ever in the US, meaning that the economy has been growing for the past um, 
eight years or so. So if you, don't, I don't know anything about the economy, but one thing I understand is that after a bull market, a bear market comes, meaning that the market has to go down at some stage. And this is the second longest one ever. The first one was 10 years old. We're eight years into that. So all the economists are kind of saying, you know what, I mean, we don't like to sort of mess up with your party, but at some stage it's gonna happen, okay? And what are you gonna do when it's gonna happen? That's the question that we have today. Also, I mean, if you see that the crashes, the dips that we had, they're getting bigger and bigger. So, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of volatility in that. And it's starting to show also in Revpar in the US, occupancy rates for hotels. Um, you can see the dips that we had during the previous crashes and what happened, what is happening right now, uh, despite all the excitement that we have. Um, things are starting to change. But what happens in winter? There are some people that thrive in winter. Winter is their season, their season to thrive. These are some of the companies that were founded during recession periods. So, you know, you can see some of those. Some of those in our industry, some technology companies actually were founded during downturns in our industry. The Apple that we know today was picked back up by Steve Jobs in 2000, during, um, just right after a recession. So interesting time. What is the second mega trend? This is what we call VUCA. This time of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, where all the certain things that we had are not there anymore. Choices that we made about destinations, for example, well, to run an event. We used to be, you know, Paris, London, safe choices. Tougher these years, right? You have to consider more things. There's still, obviously, amazing places to run events, but it's not as easy as it used to be. So what, what can we do? What can we do to be future-proof? Uh, my challenge today is to think about the business you're in. What is, what is the business you're in? What is it? Planning events, of course, making people happy. But what is the business you need to be in? What is the business that is coming? That's what I want you to think about for today, okay? Uh, because change is happening, is around us, and these are some of the forces that are driving change in our industry, whether it's technology, whether it's the polit political environment, terror threat, market change, competition, uh, and then there's, you know, event planners' needs that are changing, there's the attendees' needs that are changing. We fear change. We don't like change. So let me tell you a little story about change. If of any event, this is probably the best event ever to tell you this story. I'm going to show you in a second. Obviously, the Italians are going to react to this one sort of much better. But do you know this man? Anyone in the room? A few? See all the Italians going, yay. I mean, his name is right there. I got someone at a conference saying, oh, yeah, it's there. The name is there. I can read it. I'm like, OK, fail. So he used to be a Formula One pilot, right? Of all places, this is probably the best place to tell this story. And he was a Formula One pilot. He wasn't doing so well, honestly. He was usually in the last three. Not a beautiful team, I would say, at the time. So he said, you know what? I need to make a change. I need to start changing stuff. I need to sort of mix things up. And what he did, he went to the US and started to compete in the SCART formula, as they call it there. And it was doing really well. He was rookie of the year. He's actually starting to competing and winning. And then all of a sudden, during the race, this happens. Crack picks up the lead. Uh oh and Zanardi, oh, with a terrible crash. Yellow is out. Zanardi coming out in turn one. So what do you do? What do you do when something like that happens to you? What do you do? When do you, what, do you, what do you do when such strong change sort of presents itself to your, yourself or your business? Well, he lost both legs in the, in the accident. It's pretty bad. And he said, you know what? I'm going to embrace this change. I'm going to go back to that track and finish the race. And he did that. He had a special car. And he finished that race. 
And he said, you know what? I want more change. I'm going to try and compete in the Ironman. If you know the Ironman, is one of the toughest competitions on earth, right? Bike, marathon, swimming. And it was the first in his category. He said, you know what? I want more change. I'm going to go to the Olympics. And he went to the Olympics, and he won three gold medals in his category. And he said, you know what? After London 2012, I'm going to go back to the Olympics in a different category in Brazil. And there he is with his gold medal. And last month, he went again back to the Ironman and put out 50 years old world record in his category. So there's different ways to react to change. This is one that I want you to think about because everybody got so scared about it. But you know, we have to embrace it. And my concept for today is that anticipation will win your business. The more you're ready to anticipate what's coming, the better you're gonna be in your business. And also, we get a lot of information at these events. You listen and listen and listen. How many of you then, you go back to the office and you say, it was an amazing event. What did you learn? I don't know. I don't have a clue. A lot of beautiful information, fantastic information, don't get me wrong, but nothing happened. Why? Why doesn't it happen? Because information by itself is great potential. Action is what makes the difference. So today, you got to take action and pick three things, whatever, between myself, Adrian, Shauna, and all the amazing speakers you have today. Pick three things, three things that you're going to do once you go back to the office. Don't blame it on us. Don't blame it on us. We want it to blame it on yourself. We want it to take responsibility, take, char take charge of the things we're going to show you. Because I'm going to show you a lot of ideas. I'm going to show you a lot of cool things. But if you don't take action, no change is going to happen. You're not going to be ready for it. OK, so I'm going to be starting talking about some of the beautiful trends impacting our industry. Millennials. Who's a millennial in the room? A few? Yeah. yeah. I see you. Who remembers this? Millennials. They're coming. They're taking planet Earth, ripping their skin apart, eating live rats. This is the visitors, by the way, from the 80s. Beautiful TV show. So scared while I was watching it. Millennials are going to kick you out of business. Nothing anymore is going to be the same because millennials are there, right? A lot of bull crap, I would say. Sorry for my French. Um, I was reading in a, in a book recently. I gather you can read, so I won't repeat that. Um, but yeah, interesting statement in a book about millennials. What is happening to our world? Said Plato in the fourth century before Christ. It's not definitely millennials, our problem. Why? What do they want? What do millennials want? They want more engagement, they want more technology, they want more sustainability, they want healthy choices, they want transparency. Who doesn't want that? Please. Oh no, give me everything, but not transparency. I hate that. Like, what are we talking about here, right? You know, it's not, it's not a problem with millennials. It's a problem sometimes with doing the same things all over again. Millennials are definitely more vocal about it. They're going to take on their phone and start you know, beating the, the crap out of you if you don't perform. But as we're evolving, I had a 70-year-old guy next to me on the plane checking his Facebook, you know, posting selfies with weird faces on Instagram. What are we talking about here? Screw the millennial thing. Because we know what to expect. That is the main problem. Why did I put the, the Tour Eiffel? Any French in the room here? All right. Do you know why the Tour Eiffel was built? Well, the, oh, sorry, catch box time. By the way, I was in New Zealand doing this event. The way they throw the catch box, oh my god, with the rugby thing going on. <laughs> right, sorry. No, don't worry, I'm not going to kill you. This is like, are you ready for it? Sorry, it was a bad catch, a bad throw, actually. Um, why was it built, uh, the Tour Eiffel? Can you speak in the... We have the catch box on. It was for the World Expo exhibition. So it was, it was the entrance 
of the world. It was built for an exhibition, right? They had budget, for sure, back then. <laughs> I mean, that was cool. But I was looking through the, the world exhibition pictures from the 1800 something, so 120 years ago. It's exactly the same as what is today. Nothing has changed, nothing. Boots, people going around, people screaming at each other. Doing... What has changed there? Pretty much nothing. So how do we expect change in behavior if we keep doing things the same way all over again? So we did a research recently, and 75% of our professionals find that meeting design is important to their event. I said it, 2017 was the year of meeting design. You have Adrian Seeger, top world expert on meeting design, do attend his sessions, both of his sessions, because you're gonna get a lot out of it. And meeting design is a way to, to be millennial proof because you're gonna plan better events, and this is what people want. So this is myself and my buddy, Mike McCallan. We were running on the strip in Vegas during IMAX. Who was in IMAX? It was last year, yay! It was fun, we did it again this year, and I love it. I was running there, I'm not a runner, as you can tell. I was, I was there, I was running, I got people drunk from the night before in Vegas. Run, Forrest, run! Shouting at me, but it was fun, it was amazing! We were connecting on a different way, you know, because the IMAX people were so clever to understand that connecting, especially the millennials, so many young people there, having fun and connecting with each other, you sort of start having that bond during the whole exhibition because you share the incredible experience together. But you know, it's not just about that. I love this concept, this idea of getting a zip code that is happening. This is a, a, a whole city in Italy that you can have for your event. Can you do that for, for, can you have that for your event here? I'm sure you can. Can you book a, a beach as, um, this is WEC in Atlantic City. Um, and you know, they, they, they had this amazing environment. Probably we're in, you know, we actually have chap, chapter sort of book type examples in this venue of how you can use the space creatively to engage your attendees. Or tapping into local performance or local speakers. We forget about that so many times because we talk about sustainability, but we're not, when we talk about sustainability, we're not just used talking about recycling or being green. We're talking about using the local resources, making communities thrive. And you know, this is what PCMA did, for example, in Austin, where everybody all of a sudden forgot about the event because Matthew McConaughey was on stage supported by Visit Austin. Everybody was panicking on social media because you have this incredible opportunity of tapping into local VIPs, but, you know, we were reviewing Cambridge, for example, um, as a destination, and how they use the universities to get people in for events to speak so you can save on your budget. That's a clever idea, isn't it? The book we wrote together with Adrian, Meeting Design, you can get it for free on the blog if you want to. Another interesting concept, the concept of hype, the event of the future. For the event of the future, you're not allowed to discount things as hype. Let me give you a story about that. This happened to me in 2009. I, I really can't remember his name, I promise. Like, it's not me being mean, but I do, do not remember who it was. But he was so adamant. We were on LinkedIn, we were having a fight, and he was saying, you know, I'm sorry, probably at the, those tech events you go to is going to happen, but never, ever we will use hashtag at events. I don't see it happening. Conferences, you know, for event people, never, ever, right? So it's an attitude. It's a type of attitude that I want you to discard of saying, oh, Snapchat is for the young kids, and that is for that, and that is for that. No, it's not. It probably is, but you need to understand what is going on, and you need to, and, and, and also, Something that is catching up and is happening right now is that you don't have the time to say, oh, I have to discount Snapchat, because all of a sudden Instagram is taking what Snapchat is doing, exactly the same thing. So you kind of need to understand the process behind it, otherwise you're gonna be left out extremely quickly from the market. So discounting things that high, as hype doesn't work. Make sure you understand all things, uh, tech and social. Understand the ultimate 
use of social media. What do you think is the ultimate use of social media? Anyone in the audience at events? Why would you use social media at events? Anyone? Any taker? You got a catch box there. Can you throw it to your colleague, please, without injuring him? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. ah, right, that was good. Oh, is it not working? Catch box fail. To connect people, oh, that's a good one, absolutely. To connect people, anyone else? Why do we use social media events? Right there, scream to us. To raise the buzz around the event, love that. To get your message across. To get your message across, absolutely. Anyone else? Make it viral, love that. Anyone else? Oh, you have two, all right, I love that. To do contests, is that what you said? Yeah, contests, like raffles. Competitions, yeah. Engagement, I like that, of course. Actually, after sp spending a lot of time watching cat videos on YouTube, I think I finally came to the conclusion of what the use of social media is for events. Are you ready? You ready to see that? It's FOMO. It's that. It's just that. You know what it means? I've been told that, told by people, I use too many acronyms, <laughs> yeah. The fear of missing out. I think we, we understood finally why we're using social media, because a lot of people said, oh no, you need to use social media to change lives and to, to make the, the world a better place. But you know, we're in business, we're not you know, wasting our time around. And we surely don't have time to waste in the event industry. So creating this eagerness of people that are now watching my tweets from Abu Dhabi in the US, and they say, look at this guy in fun driving cars in Abu Dhabi. Uh, right? Do you feel that? That anger? Everybody in 2009 was saying, we're not going to use social media ever because it's going to cannibalize attendance at events. People are going to watch social media uh, and they're not going to show up at our event. And all of a sudden, the actual opposite is happening. People see an event online and they get so frustrated that they're not there. They actually want to go there. So we finally have a reason to waste time watching cat videos. And you know, this is what is happening as a result. Some events sell out in 30 minutes, 20 minutes, hundreds of thousands of tickets gone in minutes. Can you do that for your event? Oh yeah, no, but we do conferences. This is not the Burning Man, right? You thinking that? I look at this one, sorry. This is an SEO conference. Can you think about anything more boring than SEO? Probably VAT conferences, right? It's more boring than that. So this is about search engine optimization. And they sold out in one minute thousands of tickets because they know how to use FOMO. So how can we use, how can we generate that FOMO into those that see our event? Create a sense of community. Use scarcity. Use ex exclusivity, pricing. Play with benefits. So I see more and more in registration pages at events, things like these popping up. This is like, the last six months, the number of websites that I see that have this pricing structure, it's incredible. And it's not about early birds anymore. Finally, we can shoot these birds. I don't know what, who invented this stupid, oh yeah, I love that. Let's shoot the birds, let's go hunting. Because you know, early birds, early, early birds, early, early, early birds, right? We've all done it. I mean, we're all guilty as charged. But you know, this is replacing early birds because it's creating that sense of scarcity, the sense of, I want to be platinum, right? And you're here in Abu Dhabi. Everybody wants to be platinum. They want to be on stage probably, not even platinum, right? Um, or, you know, you have something like this, which is even more. So I could attend that event for 750, fine. What do I get for $10,000? This is a conference. $10,000. I'm getting something if I go there, right? 
Who knows that? But this is clever pricing, using pricing cleverly to generate that sense of missing out that doesn't have to be just on social media. It can be on your very marketing and how you're using your marketing activity to say, you can come for just $750, but if you want to spend 10,000, this is what you get. So what can you do? There is a practical idea that I wanted to show you. Idea alert. <coughs> Sorry, I had to find sort of a noise to sort of increase that. Fantastic way to create FOMO in people watching on social media. Get a VIP idea. When they got Matthew McConaughey on stage in Austin, social media was exploding for an event, you know, about events. So usually that doesn't happen on social media. But, you know, keep it a secret. Tease. Make the, the, the moment, you know, very, very social media friendly. Get your team to stream. Get everybody excited about it. But, you know, this secrecy really creates a lot of FOMO when you actually reveal it. And then people go back to that event and that event where you reveal that VIP at the last minute was unforgettable, forgettable. So let's talk about virtual reality because, you know, we're talking about the event of the future and how the event of the future will look like. And we need to kind of talk about virtual reality. Or as some people call it, the biggest threat to the event industry. Or as some other people call it, the most exciting opportunity for the event industry. So what do you think? Is it a threat or is it an opportunity? Discuss it for a minute with someone next to you. I'm going to come and ask you a question. I'm going to ask to some of you why it's a threat. But I want also someone to say why is it an opportunity. Okay, so take one minute to discuss with someone next to you. I'm going to come to you in the back. You for I can see you there, trying to hide. Don't try to hide. I'm coming for you. I'm going to ask questions. You know, people fear speaking in public more than dying. You know that? True story. True research. Uh, story and research, I guess. Story of people. I come next to them with a the catch for you. No, don't. It's like a shooting um, type of activity. Virtual reality. Is it going to get us out of business? Or is it going to be an opportunity? Okay, the minute is over. Do you have an opinion? So who thinks it's, gonna, it's a threat to our industry? Anyone in the room that thinks that virtual reality, the ability to attend events virtually, is going to kick us out of business? Right there. I got Shauna. Straight from Minnesota. <laughs> Very cold in Minnesota. Cold there. Uh, it's a threat to the status quo. It's All right. a threat to the way we've always done things. Mm, interesting uh, take. But we had a great conversation. We decided it's both a threat and an opportunity. Threat and opportunity. Anyone else that thinks it's a threat to the event industry? Anyone? No one. You're all very positive for the future. I love that. So who thinks it's an opportunity? Right there? Can we catch box it? All right, wait, wait. Oh, my God. Yeah. So I probably do want me to, do you want me to, it's right there. It's kind of a stretch. All right. Is that the ways to tell me you didn't enjoy the presentation so far? Oh, no, that's fine. That's, that's for that. You don't have to scream. So why is it an opportunity? Hold it, hold it next to To engage more people. Engage more. Um, I'm using an example of the Ariana Grande concert. Yep. Live stream, sold out, created publicity, created talking points, um, and people were able to experience it that couldn't actually be there for the Right. There, you raised a very interesting point there. So people that could not actually be there. Anyone else that thinks it's an opportunity? Right there, right in the back. Sorry. Good, good throw. Sorry, I'm rating throws as well. Why was there? there you go. Polite way to pass the catch box. Because uh, everything's happening in real time, so if you're not even at an event, you can know what's going on and you can respond to the market quicker. Yeah. So we need to be, be ready for it and respond quicker, and virtual reality is going to help us to do that. It is. 
or it is helping you to do that. What about venues? I, I saw some people saying venues in the room. Who's, who's a venue in the room, a hotel? Yeah? Are you using virtual reality at all? Not yet? Not yet. Right there? Can you throw it? I think so why have, is it an opportunity? Well, I think we have a very good uh, example. Um, I'm from the cycling industry, and uh, I don't know if anybody in the room heard about Swift. But it's a, it's a virtual Tell reality. Us about it's it. a, it's a, you cycle indoor on an indoor trainer, but you're in a virtual reality. So they created a virtual course, and you can uh, ride anytime to anybody in the world. Absolutely. You can talk to each other via chat while riding. So you're connecting it's, virtually with people without yeah, being there, yeah. training, exchanging yeah. opinions, connecting yeah. with other people. Yeah, it's valuable. There's an opportunity there. So, but why? One more. I'm gonna catch the last one. Can you throw it from there? Yeah, it's still working perfect. Um, it is. Yeah. From a from a venue side or a hotel side, um, yeah, it's a great opportunity because you can be sitting in IMAX Vegas. You can have a buyer there um, who's never heard of your hotel that sits in Bali um, or Dubai or wherever, and you can show them. Um, they can put a set of goggles on and they can be there in Bali or in Abu Dhabi or in Dubai. Um, which obviously then increases awareness. So. Very good point. Venues, exactly. One of the best uses. We got Adrian. Adrian? I want to make a, maybe a contentious point. I think the, op the biggest opportunity is going to be for augmented reality rather than virtual reality. I think, um, and I see augmented reality as having tremendous potential for improving live events taking a room like this and bringing things into it that are, that are, uh, that, that, uh, are projected through augmented reality. So augmented reality, for those who don't know, the ability to project images on you know, the live environment through the phone, so filters, things like that, uh, based on interaction as well. Right. I, 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 like, I like to think about using technology uh, to uh, extend the possibilities extend. in basic live events and I'm, I have to admit, I'm skeptical until we get the, sort of the Star Trek holodeck, where virtual reality, in my, my point of view, has to be good enough so that it's almost indistinguishable. Absolutely, absolutely. And but let me tell you this, it. let me tell you this, this is an extremely good point. Thanks for challenging this, because I, need, I had this fight before, so we, we usually fight online about technology, this is what we do in our spare time. And I love that, because it is exactly the opposite for me. It is exactly the opposite. And I love what the lady said there. What are we gonna do about those people that cannot be there? What are we gonna do about there? There's nothing that augmented reality is gonna help us to do with them. And I think the power of connecting people that unfortunately cannot be there because they had something coming up. They couldn't travel to be there. They didn't have the money to be there. We have an, an amazing opportunity to involve them with something more complex than just a live stream that it's slightly more immersive and is being invested billion of doll billions of dollars right now by the major tech giants and it's all about events. So we have one of the biggest opportunities. I went as far as saying, you know what, the Oculus Rift um, App Store is gonna be the new Apple App Store because people are gonna start building apps for vir virtual reality as Mark Zuckerberg announced last week of venues, the new app for virtual reality, just dedicated to events and people that want to integrate. But let me tell you what I mean by virtual reality, because a lot of people say virtual reality is this creepy word made of, I don't know, made by developers where we interact with avatars a la Second Life, you know, back in the days. We don't mean that. What we mean that today, we mean live 360 degree video. So the ability to look around yourself and use it for phones. And I will talk, be talking about that during my tech session. But I feel that, you know, virtual reality as, as you know, what we've seen, we've seen different waves of technology for the years. And, you know, first there were online registration, then we see the event apps, then we have engagement apps like Slido or the Catchbox. VR, AR, and mixed reality, now the combination of virtual reality with augmented reality, the ability for me to speak to a live audience and pass you an object and for you to play with, that's exciting. That's the event of the future. 
That's really futuristic. So how can you do that now for your event? Because it's great talk. I've seen this done by Google. They sent virtual reality sets to all of their offices that could not attend their internal conference. And they got them to attend online in a more immersive way. So especially if you work with corporate audiences, this is a great tip for you to get started. And you don't, have, you don't need necessarily fancy tools. I'll talk about those in my next session as well. Some very cheap options for you to implement something like that. For DMCs in the room, I was talking to a DMC group last week in Vegas during IMAX. And I told them, why don't you do site inspections with 360 degree cameras? Why don't you set up a Facebook page and you invite your client to come and do the site inspection with you and show them around the camera? That's a good idea. I would do that. Let's talk about the other big elephant in the room. I'm going to rush because we're short on time as well. Artificial intelligence. Another big hated concept in the industry right now. I love artificial intelligence because it's fast and it learns. It learns about you. There's numbers of uses that we can have. But let me tell you what in practice is happening. Have you ever been to the Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas? Anyone? No, no one? Right there. So you have rows, they're concierge. And what does it do? You do dial a number you, by text or by app, and you connect to the concierge. How many introverts in the room? Sorry, trick question. They don't raise their hand, usually. <laughs> but what, you know, you've checked into hotels, and if, you, if you're an introvert, Sean, I know you hear me about this. You go there, it's already awkward. You have to speak to a person, I'm like, no, please. Is there another way? I don't want to go and talk to them. Um, then you talk to them, you check in, and then you go back to your room. Oh, damn, the Wi-Fi code. Forgot about it. So what are you going to do? You're going to pick up the phone. Oh, my God. Just the idea freaks you out, right? Pick up the phone. Sorry, that's me. We just met downstairs. I need the Wi-Fi password. Oh, yeah, there's no problem, sir. I mean, it's not a problem with them. They're super nice. It's a problem with me. Don't want human interaction. It is a problem with us, and we are evolving this way. We don't want unnecessary interactions. Let's put it this way. And you can ask many interesting questions to Rose, where can you get pizza, you know, close by? And you know, it's funny because it has a human touch. Some chatbots, I will suggest some of those in this session this afternoon, um, actually have the ability to pull in a live person if the chatbot cannot answer the questions. But you know, they, they actually learn. They're going to give you a wealth of data that you're going to have because usually we rely on staff to handle these questions. So what do we do about all of these questions? We lose them. So you have an incredible opportunity, whether it's marketing, whether it's replacing temporary staff or saving a little bit on that, where it's security and feedback. There's a lot that we can do with artificial intelligence. We talk about that in our event up Bible, which is probably one of the most popular reports that we do. You can get it for free on event MB if you want it. Interesting trend. I should change this. This is probably a bit too much. But yeah, I mean, who's struggling with sponsorship in their events? I mean, we're all event professionals. You can raise your hands. Yeah, if you're there, I see you. Yeah, I mean, it's not as easy as it used to be to secure a sponsorship for events. We did a research, a thousand event professionals told us that, you know, this is a big struggle for them. So what can we do about it? How can we solve the issue? The event of the future has to take sponsorship on a different level. Because I'm sorry, we've sold the lie of exposure for too long. Having a banner up there and say, oh, but you have a banner on the site, right? Is that going to help you today? Not really. And then you have companies like this one pulling out from Dreamforce and say, you know what? I'm not going to go for the first year of Dreamforce, one of the biggest software com conferences, trade shows in the US. We're going to do our own, our own event because we have the tools, right? They can hire an event planner to do it for themselves. They can use their social networks to spread the word. And they have 10 times more conversions than Dreamforce. So how do you play against that, right? 
What do you do against that? I, I believe that the modern and the future sponsorship have to have these degrees, like they have to respond to these. We live in an era where sponsorship activities carried online. I mean, you can measure how many times you go to the bathroom on Facebook. You can really measure everything. Everything is there. So how do we translate that in live experiences where it's so intangible? So you have to find ways to deliver that. And whether it's a lounge, for example, that PCMA put in the airport in Austin, branded lounge. Lounges are becoming increasingly popular because they give the space to attendees. Or a registration check-in at the airport for CES where you can collect your badge. So you see, I'm starting to add value all of a sudden to my attendees. This is a lounge by South by Southwest, a South by Southwest by PayPal. Very interesting idea. You're getting a space for people to work, as we have a lounge here right in the back for you, of the, for those of you that want to get some work done, right? Once again, Intel. There's a bar. I want a bar. There's value right there. I'm sorry, it doesn't have to be necessarily about tracking everything, but value. This is like you're offering me a space where I can connect with other people. I immediately remember you. Or you can get branded people going around, you know, that's cool ideas. You can have, you know, healthy chocolate, whatever that is. Start adding value in sponsorship real value. Or you can have branded charging stations that actually track how many people pass by. I'll talk about those in my session this afternoon. There's interesting stuff happening there. You can get the report if you want to learn more. It's free. So you can get it on the blog. But let's reinvent the experience because today it's all about the experience. And what does it mean, really? What does it mean? Experience. This interesting beast. Adventure, maybe. This is an interesting example from Contiki that has very adventure-driven type of experience. We're not in the place of experience, of thrill. Driving a car, taking advantage of leisure. The combination of business and leisure that is taking over. More and more people want to have some level of experience of engaging experiences when they travel for business. We are probably in the best possible place to put those things together. Because you want a little bit of, of going out. You're out of your place, but that's not enough. We want more than that. Or wellness. I saw you have a wellness room down there as well, which is completely on trend with what, what I was trying to say. This is a hotel in the US, uh, it's brand of part of the, the intercontinental hotel group, and they have a brand that actually has yoga training in the room, you know, exercise balls, courses downstairs, they're stepping up the wellness trend to a new level. This is important for you because I know you work with luxury audiences as well. So interesting research, 65% of travelings Travelers, luxury travelers, they want sustainability in their choices. So you gotta deal with that. If you want to cater to those audiences that seek luxury, they're increasingly more interested in sustainable, sustainable solution. So who knows this guy? Anyone? Anyone? See, no, nobody knows this guy, and that's a problem that we have right now. I put these slides before what happened in Vegas last week. We had a tough week in Vegas um, last week. And, you know, this was the guy that prevented a big terror plot unfolding at the Stade de France during the attacks in Paris because he was checking tickets at the door, at the entrance of the stadium, and he chased the person that was trying to get into the stadium twice without a ticket. And just because he was following procedures, he avoided this person to get in. Events are increasingly targets. If there's one thing that events of the future have to deal with, it's the security level. I'm not a security expert. I'm not gonna give you tips for that. 
but I'm going to be telling you that this is becoming high priority for more and more people, regardless of where you live. We saw a little bit of that in Vegas. Um, but yeah, think about that. All right. We see it every year, right? You see this? Do you forward it to your loved ones and say, see, I told you, I'm stressed, right? The fifth most stressful job in the world is event professionals, right? And you're like, yeah, I five to that. <laughs> I'm stressed. Tell me more. Say, take the pictures. I know, always a popular one. Always one to brag about. But what about the events of the future? What does it have to be with the events of the future? There's a massive change in how we feel our profession and how our profession is evolving. And they ask me every year, Julius, what do you think about the fact we're in the most stressful position? And I started to think about that a little bit. So let's look at the top five, shall we? Military personnel. Police, woman, man, pilot, firefighter, event planner. What do they have in common? Anyone? You can shout, no catch box. Safety? Yeah? What's that? Stress, of course. What's that? Responsibility. Anyone else? Available 24 7, right? Tell Joanna about it, the yeah, interesting night last night, setting up for this beautiful event. Anyone else? Risk. Long hours. Risk. What's that? Risk. Listening. Risk. 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 Sorry. Anyone else? Risk? They're, Absolutely. They're doing their jobs for others, not themselves. They're doing their job for others, not for themselves. Who else? Unpredictability. Unpredictability. All truth. See, already you feel better about yourselves, right? Oh, well, I do these many things. It's pretty cool. I was thinking about it. What did you want to be when you grew up? Have you ever thought about that? You want to be a pilot, right? I see some people. You want to be a firefighter. Oh, yeah. So I think it's time to say, yeah, when we grow up, we want to be an event planner. Thank you very much for your time today.